Cat, Ed Midsole Bud here. Welcome to Ed Bud Running Shoe Reviews. I've been trawling through my running shoe collection in mind of finding the best of the best for upper, midsole and outsole. The first in today's series will be for outsole. If it's your first time here, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications too. Give this video a thumbs up like as well, it really helps out and share it with your running buddies. Dankeschön. The obligatory patterned rubber protrusions. The part of the shoe that makes the most contact with the ground actually. Arguably the most important part of a running shoe perhaps. I've selected the most premium cuts for you for today's episode. The most outstanding outsoles in my collection. But first, for some real stinkers. So some of the shoes have been quite disappointing from the outsole perspective. The Fuel Cell SC Pacer is one of those shoes sadly. Loads of exposed home here which has taken a bit of a battering from the elements even after a few miles. All you have to protect it is that puny rubber forefoot section. The heel isn't much better and the rubber is hiding back as it's not even flush with the foam. The other model that's been moved out of my collection and sold on is the Nike Zoom X Streetfly. It may have been okay I guess for road and track but if you use it on anything else it just tears up in no time. The mid to forefoot rubber section wore down faster than a lot of other shoes that I've had. Sadly the endorphin in speed 3 is showing similar signs. Zoom X and Power Run PB foam just don't seem to be the most resilient, quite fragile. When you expose it to the elements, it soon takes a beating. So those are some of the ones that have scored perhaps lower in my outsole estimations. So onto the heroes. First up is the Nike Tempo Next Percent or the Tempo as it's now called. This shoe's been in production for a long time now. Several years back was its release. They keep knocking out new versions of it, I guess because people keep buying it. Occasionally it drops down to a discount price, but very seldom does that happen. A particularly good outsole here on the Tempo Next Percent, very durable rubber that mimicked that that could be found on the Alpha Fly only it appears to be a slightly tougher compound than what we found on Nike's race shoe. It's barely worn at all after my testing. And it's quite an aggressive shoe as well, this one. It's not like you're just going to be pandering around out there. I really like those thick rubber ridges that we get here. Almost feels like you're falling into a crevice. Really tough rubber here, a big departure from what you get on the street fly. Handled road and pavement, no problem, and was capable of some multi-terrain events as well. Really found the traction very, very good. It kind of grips and digs into the floor. The sections in the heel as well are quite wide and they fall back to the rear of the shoe. I never really found that it picked up too much debris at all. It is a shoe that people find loud on foot, but I think I'd rather have the loud level rather than actually really poor traction. It certainly lasts the test of time and it does the job. So I guess you can't have everything if you want a silent shoe and no traction, then okay. But whatever rubber is in this shoe isn't the same as what we get in some of the other Nike models. A worthy inclusion in today's outstanding outsole video. Next up, a shoe from Adidas. It's the rubber from the Adios Pro 3. Works in pretty much everything aside from very smooth, wet surfaces. It's just so grippy though. Absolute monster, this one. This is one of those outsoles that actually gets better the more you use it. The more and more miles you put into that outsole, it just gets a little bit more tacky and kind of course i suppose it's something that adidas get right more often than wrong even back in the adios 4 the continental rubber web on the outsole of the shoe was a winner and modern equivalents are no different the adios pro 3 seems to have picked up a lot of fans over the last few months people getting into the shoe perhaps understanding it a little bit more it really is one of the top ones when it comes to outsole grip and durability almost no wear here on the outsole after 100 miles adidas have even implemented some protective measures here in the heel adding in this plastic section here underneath this rubber part just seems to help it stick to the midsole a bit more Again, it's a worthy choice for today's video. It's the outsole that just keeps on giving. A bit like the Jelly of the Month Club. I think you could probably include the Sen 8 and 9 into this sort of section too. They've got a very similar outsole setup. Almost no degradation to the rubber on those either. Just gets better with time, which is something you can't say about all running shoes. A bit of an outlandish outsole inclusion here with the Vomero 16 from Nike. 
still smells like a sweet shop. This is one of those unsung heroes, really. I love the Vimeri 16. Nike still seem to be selling them, putting out new colorways. Maybe they are delaying the release of the Vimero 17 because this one's still doing so well. Lots of cushion here from that dual midsole. We had SRO2 and proper Zoom X. The outsole on this one, a true beast. Wonderful protrusions here. A bit waffle-like in the forefoot and these wavy lines back in the heel. Just really, really versatile. Versatile. You could use it on practically anything. I found the lugs here were so well distributed there was enough space in between them so that you didn't get debris caught in there. I think if you're a fan of a full length rubber outsole then this one ticks all the boxes. Really worked well on just about any surface really wet or dry. This is apparently OG RS02 rubber, high abrasion stuff and it really does seem to last that bit longer than some of the other things that we found on Nike shoes. Just a good balance between fins, lugs and flexibility here in the Vomero 16. I think it works probably too well almost the fact that they're selling more and more of these bringing out more colorways every month after like way over 100 miles you've still got the sort of coarse pattern to each of the lugs you don't find that on an awful lot of outsoles at that point. It makes the Vomero 16 a worthy inclusion on today's outstanding outsole video. Next up, I got a shoe from the cats over at Puma. I had a hard time picking out a single shoe. Puma grip that they use on their modern running shoes is so good. It's on almost every single one. And pretty much most shoes are a contender here. I have narrowed it down to one that's got great grip with a balance of weight and coverage too. As such, the Deviate Nitro Elite 2 is one of the best outsoles in my collection right now. The traction offered in the mid to forefoot area with those teardrop-like shaped lugs and layout offers great multi-surface traction. I found it extremely durable over 100 miles. This is my backup pair, the other ones are in the wash. Though looking at those, no detectable wear so far at 100 miles, no degradation underfoot either. I mean, you can look at the outsole and examine it to see if there's any degradation and any wear, but actually underfoot it hasn't changed at all. In fact, it's probably a bit better than it was at the start. The heel area on my other pair did leave viewers debating as to whether there was some wear in those two strips at the back, mainly on the lateral side, but I can confirm the pattern's still there, it hasn't really worn down at all. I think it's just because it's a bit of a different colour, it looks like it could have worn down, but it hasn't. Those shoes just seem to come up smelling of roses every time when it comes to the outsole. Really good on cornering and you get some really good grip and pull as you kind of toe off. From overall durability, I think it's pretty hard to actually overlook the Puma Deviant Nitro Elite 2 for outsole. I think they've got their balance actually between the forefoot section and the rear just right. You don't want too much depth there to the rubber. I think they've pretty much got it spot on. It's always like a balance between like weight and coverage. I think they got it right. Okay, last up in terms of the king of the outsoles. It has to be the Primex Strung from Adidas. When I picked this shoe up, you know, you have to think twice about your sanity. It was so expensive, but I've got so much fun, excitement and use out of this shoe. I think it's actually paid for itself. It's constantly amazed me in terms of its ability to simply brush off miles and kilometers. I've dished out a lot of punishment to this one. It keeps coming back for more. Road and pavement just seem to sort of bounce off it really. You can see there in the heel it just looks practically brand new after you've given it a bit of a clean. The smooth rubber here seems almost like impervious to my efforts to wear it down and it stayed stuck to this section of the foam as well which is a problem we've seen in some shoes especially with very soft foams the rubber just starts to separate after a time. Heaven knows what they put into the mid to four foot ridged rubber section not showing any signs of wear at about 150 miles. Just one of those shoes that amazes me really. How can it be? Like 20 mile long runs into this one and no problem. I have seen various viewer images where they've taken these shoes up to like three or 400 miles. I think the midsole's probably starting to degrade a little bit by then, but they've still got loads of rubber left. It really is a bit of a mystery. I guess it's one of those things that sometimes you do actually get what you pay for. We can't get away from the fact that the Primex Strung is a very expensive shoe though still more vastly affordable than the alpha fly next percent 2 or that endorphin elite just shows you can get some awesome mileage out of these shoes and some fun too and that's the major factor right does surprise me sometimes that you get people saying oh, you know, i dragged myself out for like a 15 mile long run do you even enjoy it is that are you enjoying yourself doing this 
If you're not, you need to consider why you're doing it. I think as a training tool that you can use in the rotation, and if you can get on with the stack of the Prime X, it certainly does the job in terms of durability and traction. Just be careful on the corners. Okay, that's my top five running shoes in my current collection in terms of outsole. Let me know your picks and opinions on my five down in the comments. We'll go for outsole in the next episode, so keep your eyes peeled when that drops. Musical interlude time. One of my favourite albums from Credence Clearwater Revival is Cosmos Factory. There's a load of their own tracks on here, but I particularly like the cover versions. They do a great version of the Big O, Mr. Roy Orbison's Ubi Doobie. You can tell that the guitar player here, which I think's probably John Fogerty, has really caught the guitar solo just right. He's clearly played this a lot of times when he's a young man and he's got it spot on to what Orbison plays on the original. There's a little bit more overdrive and stuff, but it's a really faithful representation just sort of lifted into the early 70s. The fantastic Looking Out My Back Door is on this album though as well, which if you're a fan of The Big Lebowski or know all about, this is one of those songs whenever I hear it, it kind of reminds me of being a kid, imagination kind of set free, just looking out the back door into the garden, and these kind of infinite possibilities available, running around, driving on the bike, listening to my Walkman, all while getting as muddy as possible. Thanks for tuning in, people. It's always appreciated. Hit us up with a super thanks to help support the channel on a more ad hoc basis. Also, give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you 